What's going on guys? Welcome back to the home of Chrome. Today's video is going to be just a little bit different. But first of all, what I'd like to do is like to tell you guys, thanks for sticking around. Thank you for your support in this year that I have had the home of Chrome as a channel. Uh, today's video, like I said, is going to be a little bit different. I'm Earl Scheib. I'll paint any car for just $99.95. This week only, you'll get polyurethane additive free. A $19.95 value absolutely free. With polyurethane, your paint job will have an extra hard glass-like finish and added durability. Your paint job will be guaranteed not to fade for four full years. Remember, free polyurethane this week only at Earl Scheib's. Right. I'll paint any car for just $99.95 on this British Beauty here, but it's gonna be from four years ago on a channel that I had started way back before I knew The Wizard and John Ross and all those guys that had all of their support. And again, guys, thank you for your support. I do appreciate that so very much in helping me get the home of Chrome started. Uh, you guys are absolutely amazing. So like I said, the video is gonna be on this car here from four years ago. Back before we had some of the mods done, back before you know we had a lot of stuff, there was still a lot of stuff going on with it. So to kind of give you guys a heads up on what we've done, changed out the four sealed beam lights for the Zero lights here. Now these would have been available on the Rolls Royce if it was in Japan or Europe back in 1982, 83 time frame. We put a Bentley Turbo Arch in spoiler on the front. Uh, really helps out the looks of that and uh, repainted it black and silver, brand new interior, put a different motor in it, which I might have to change again. I don't know. Um, I've got to get in there and look, see if it actually is a rod knock or whatever, but I have noticed that when the oil pressure does come up, it goes away. So it might just be, I don't know. We got to figure it out and then we're gonna have, we're gonna do that. So anyway, um, yeah. I hope you guys enjoy the video. Like I said, it's going to be a short one. Don't know how long it's really going to be. Actually, I probably will know by the time this comes out because I'm editing it, making it happen. Anyway, it's been crazy, guys. Um, this is like the first video I've put out in the past two weeks uh, because professional life, personal life, all that has just been absolutely crazy. I've got some things going on coming up this week and that will kind of determine which way my channel goes. Now I plan on keeping it, um, but some of the videos are gonna be sparse as far as when they happen. Um, yeah, there's gonna be, I don't know. I don't know. We'll keep you guys in the loop, let you know what's going on. But as of right now, we're still going. Uh, Vampire Van, uh, there's a lot of finishing work that needs to be done on that, on that monstrosity. Um, but that finishing work is something that I'm still, you know, the devil's in the details. I'm still trying to figure out how I want it to look. Um, and then I'm at that point of how I want it to look and I want it to look right. I don't want to just go and spend a bunch of money on this thing just to make content. Um, you know, there's, there's still a lot to go on. I've got to get the body and the grill shell and you start getting all of that stuff into paint um, so I can start getting that done and I get the, get the wiring run and the brake lines and the fuel lines. All that stuff needs to be run. It's not hard, um, but it's just making sure that it is the way I want it to be. Uh, so Vampire Van, Sadie the Roll Kill Rolls Royce, Road Kill Rolls Royce. Um, and then Heavenly Her, she's been giving me issues, so I've been having to keep that up you know, having to work on the daily. It's just been a lot of automotive stuff. I've, I've been very overwhelmed with automotive stuff. And then uh, if you guys remember my blue hearse, the 1970 Superior Crown Sovereign uh, combination car, I rebuilt the brake system on it last week. I've got to get the fuel system cleaned up. It, it works, everything works like it should, but I just need to tidy it up, make it right um, because you don't mess around with fuel. And uh, yeah, so there's been a whole lot going on. So with that being said, I haven't had a whole lot of time to actually do any other actual work that I think you guys would have been interested in. You might not be interested in what you're about to watch. I don't know, we'll find out. 
Um, but again, thank you so much for the support this year. Uh, we were right at the one year mark, I think, on it. So yeah, like, share, subscribe. I really appreciate it. It helps the channel out. Please, please, please comment down below. Helps the algorithm out a little bit, trying to get us back out there. It's just been, it's been wild, guys. Um, so yeah, I do appreciate it. Now, I've got to go back to the house. The reason I came over here was to resituate this other Rolls Royce motor that I have sitting over here that's probably going to go in this one, uh, depending on the internal condition of it, of the engine. And then uh, I got to get the original motor that I was going to put in Vampire Van out of the garage, get all of that mess loaded up, take it over to my buddy's house. I'm just giving him that. I just, I don't have any need for it anymore. And I've been lugging it around since I lived in Connecticut. Um, and that's been, that's been almost 10 years. So it's time for it to go. He's gonna put it in his Nova. You guys have probably seen that. Um, if you wanna take a look at some older videos, uh, yeah, check those out too. Uh, check out the playlist. There's a lot of cool stuff, a lot of earlier stuff. So you'll see some changes in how I'm doing things and uh, yeah, so I guess this is kind of a question, a Q&A type of deal. Um, so yeah, submit your questions down below. Um, I know some of you have asked about Granddad's truck. It's still around. Um, there's a lot going on with it up here mentally. Um, I'm not going to do the work on it myself. I actually will farm that out and have somebody else do it. Uh, so yeah. Again, comment down below if you have any questions and uh, we'll answer those in a, another channel, another channel, another video. So yeah, anyway, enjoy the video guys. We'll see you around and uh, I'll probably cut in. Hey everybody, I'm Pat and this is my 1982 Rolls Royce Silver Spur. I purchased this car in September of 2018 on eBay for $4,000. And when I got this car, it absolutely did not look like this. I painted it about uh, about two weeks ago. And when I got the car, the paint had absolutely failed. The clear coat was flaking off and the vinyl top had been removed at some point in the car's life uh, by one of the previous owners. So when they did that, they didn't do anything to the roof. They just left it in the uh, red oxide primer color with the scrapes and scratches and everything else. Now, look at the paint. You know, you can see that it's got some, uh, it's got some orange peel and some fanning on it, but that's okay. When, I'm, when I've got the interior in it, I'm going to hand it over to a local detail shop and we're gonna have them wet sand and polish it. And hopefully we can bring it out to, uh, uh, the paint out to a higher standard than where it is right now. Now, I am by no means a professional painter. The last car I painted was in 2002, and that car was white. And uh, so this is my first time to paint a black car, and it is less forgiving. Uh, there's still a few pieces here on the car that I need to replace, like uh, this chrome trim that goes around this light here. As you see, I've got it over here. I need to get the clips to put this side back on. Uh, a couple lenses out back need to be changed out. And I've got the forward part of the dash. It is out and at my house. Um, recovering that. I've recovered the dashboard. And you can kind of see what's going on here. That's what the back side of a Rolls Royce dash looks like. Just a whole lot of wires and everything else. Um, we've got the seats out. Got the seats out here they're at the upholstery shop i've redone the door panels uh, the headliner is being redone and as you can see here the front side of the dash is much like the uh, other side of the dash it's pretty much apart i've got the wood out it's being redone uh, surprisingly the carpets in it are actually pretty good so i'm not going to worry about those right now um, but yeah, all in all, I mean, the car, it runs fine. It drives fine. I've put new suspension spheres in the rear uh, this past weekend. <clears throat> so it does, it rides a lot better. 
and it just it's to the point now where it just needs a lot of cleanup i still got to do the brake accumulators up front which are on the bottom side of the engine in that area there just right next to the frame and transmission modulator a few other little odds and ends uh, i'm hoping to get the the front shocks here changed out pretty soon you know there's things on here that need to be tidied up like i've got to get new caps for this and uh just a few little odds and end type deals um new tires i got three that match one that doesn't so yeah this car was you know it was a steal it really at four thousand dollars the guy that i got it from he bought the car because well he he liked rolls royces and so he bought it for you know a really good deal for him but he wasn't a mechanic and he didn't really know what to do with it and what was going on and he really just didn't understand a lot about the car uh so when i called him to talk about the car he told me that basically there's more stuff on this car that doesn't work than does <laughs> so but come to find out with these cars a lot of the electrical as you can imagine if it's not electrical and it doesn't work clean up the grounds clean up the connections and you'd be surprised at at you'd be surprised at what works again uh, case in point uh, i've got the i was going to replace the this instrument cluster here because the fuel gauge and the water temp did not work well you clean up the grounds and all of a sudden things start working and then going through the dashboard or well, through the dashboard through the glove box it's pretty cool you know you find uh find some history on the car and um looking at some of the previous owners history in the car and you know doing what i do trying to find out as much as about the car's history as possible come to find out this car has had a very interesting life and that's something that i'll cover in future videos so well this is it uh, like i said she still needs quite a bit of work and quite a bit of cleanup but i think it's going to be okay um yeah, so for four thousand bucks, I'm not going to complain for a car like this. So, well, we thanks thanks for listening to me ramble. We'll talk to you guys later. All right, bye. All right, folks, here we are. We've got it. Uh, we've got the wet sanding process started. I'm starting off with an 800 grit uh, wet dry sandpaper. Now, 800 is probably a little bit or more aggressive than you'd want to really start off with. However, like I said, I'm not a professional painter, so this paint job does have some flaws in it. Um, you know, a little bit of overspray and fanning and orange peel. Of course, we want to try and get those out, try to get the uh, DOI on the paint job a little bit higher than what it is right now. And uh, for those of you that don't know, DOI stands for dis uh, Distinction of Image. Sorry about that, I had a lapse in memory. Uh, so yeah, that's what we're starting off with. We're starting off with the 800. And we're gonna try and get this wing here sorted out. Don't know how much of the car I'm gonna get done tonight, but uh, I'm gonna press on, I guess, till I run out of paper. But I'm starting off with an 800, then I'm gonna go to 1,000, then 1,500, 2,000, 25, then finish up with a 3,000. Uh, maybe a 4,000 if I can get some. We'll go from there, we'll see what happens. However, you know, just kind of a few tips. Like on these cars here, we've got these lines here, you got this body line here, and then this body line here. Um, whenever you're wet sanding, you want to stay away from the curves and the edges as much as you're as much as possible, because what happens is is your paint's going to be more thicker through here, so you have a little bit more to work with. And then when you get to your curves and edges, what happens is it hits here and then it kind of flows down. So this is gonna be a little bit thinner on top or on these corners. So you just wanna pay attention to that. Um, this car is, like most of you know, this car is full of edges and lines, which kind of makes this car great. Um, but anyway, that's what we're doing right now. So we'll get back to it. See you guys in a little bit. Okay guys, uh, earlier in the video, you know, we started off with the 800 grit wet sandpaper uh so basically i've done the entire car in the 800 
I've worked it down to the 1000 and then I've done the uh, the front clip of the car and the 1500 I'm gonna call it a night tonight this is uh, as you can imagine it's a pretty big car gets kind of tiring so uh, show you guys a couple of things like earlier when I was talking about you want to watch out for your edges um, because they're usually the thinnest as you can see right here hit it there there and let's go over here here and started right here um, so yeah those are a couple places I'm gonna have to go back and touch up not a big deal uh, but then as you can see here there's also still a lot of orange peel in it even after the fit you know working it down to the 1500 so what I'm gonna do is is on this I'm gonna start over with the 800 and basically do from that trim over here to the edge just do this entire side of the hood over with the 800 and work it back up to the 1500 um, so I'm gonna try and get as much of that orange peel out orange peel out as I possibly can now, of course you know once you get it you can polish it from here um, won't get the best of results because you'll still have you can still see all the little dips and everything in it so yeah that's what we're gonna do this other side over here was actually just as bad if not worse than the other side of the car I think what happened was is by the time I got around to this to the right side of the car I was pretty much worn out um, as you can see I still got some here but like I said I want to stay away from the edges as much as possible I'm gonna take this piece of trim off here and uh, yeah we're gonna hit it again tomorrow and hopefully I can get it outside and um, get it a good bath so we'll see what happens so because it's it's gonna be cold again it's gonna be like 29 degrees tomorrow so it's probably not as cold as some of the places that you all are watching from, but still pretty chilly. So yeah. All right. Well, I'm going to go home. We'll talk to you guys later. Thanks. Bye. Hey everybody. Welcome back to the channel. This quick update on the 1982 Rolls Royce Silver Spur. Um, got quite a bit done since last time I've updated it. Uh, if you remember in the last video, I did not have a complete interior in it. I have the interior mostly in it now. Uh, we've got the wood has been redone. We've got new seats all the way through. We've got a new headliner, which is very different from what came in it. I went with the burgundy and white and the pleated inserts. I know not everybody's a fan of it because, you know, there are some purists out there that think it has to be exactly as the way it came from crew. I'm not a purist in anything, so I do things the way I want them. And this is how I wanted them. As you can see, I've got the arm the armrests are still out. Uh, I should be getting those back in the first of next week. Uh, little small things like this I've got to send out and have, have either replaced or recovered. Um... Yeah, so the interior is shaping up fairly well. There's still a few little things in there that I want that I want to have either recovered or die. Uh, a lot of it's that lower portion of the dashboard. I don't have that done in black. Um, yeah, so it's it's coming around. We've got a big project ahead of us this week. Uh, this weekend, we're going to go ahead and we are putting this in it this is another rolls royce six and three quarter liter out of an 86 silver spur uh no correction not silver spur silver spirit um pick this up for 3500 dollars. this engine's got about 60,000 miles on it where that one right there did a Carfax on it and the odometer says 115,000 miles and I was thinking well that's kind of high but yeah it is what it is but that odometer doesn't work so I did a Carfax on it 
and come to find out this car has over 200,000 miles on it. Um, I estimate probably somewhere in the range of about 220 to 230,000 miles, uh, which kind of, uh, I think goes back to its days as a hotel shuttle car. Um, and then it was a daily driver for, uh, from what I understand, some fairly sketchy people uh, have had it in the past. So anyway, this has got to come out because it has low compression and the uh, B1 and B3 cylinders and it has low compression in the B1 or correction A1 cylinder on the right side and a completely dead cylinder on the A4 side. So this motor is shot. Um, you know, I've had people tell me, why are you changing out the motor? Just have the motor taken out and get it rebuilt. Yeah, well, you know, that motor to have it rebuilt. Uh, I've called around town here and talked to some Rolls-Royce folks that deal in Rolls-Royce cars. Yeah, we're looking at anywhere between twenty-five dollars to $30,000 for a full rebuild. Um, if it's just a head issue, to have the heads rebuilt is anywhere from seven to ten. And let's be honest, right now, th this car will never be worth those prices. Um, so that's just not feasible. So I picked that up on eBay for $3,500. Give a shout out to Rick over at Coach Built in Columbus, Ohio. And um, hopefully we'll be able to get this, uh, get this in and out this weekend, or out and in, however you want to look at it. I'll be able to get this taken care of this weekend, and hopefully we can get it running. Um, that's kind of the plan. Right now I'm over in my father-in-law's shop, and I don't want to take up much space for too long. Uh, he's not using it right now because he is overseas, but uh, yeah, so we're going to go ahead. We're going to try and get this done. Uh, I've got a, a big... Got big plans this weekend, so hopefully I can get some help over here. We can get this, uh, get the bonnet off, get the radiator out, get it jacked up. Start going from there. As you can see, I've already got the, I've got the grill off of it. That's it sitting over there. That grill is just as pretty laying on the floor as it is on the car. Um, but yeah, you know, I've got, I want, I'm, I'm looking at it in his lights over here. I want to redo the paint uh, because this is a detail shop. And so he's got a lot of crazy lights over here to kind of uh, bring everything into, uh, into focus on what needs to be done. So anyway, yeah, this is what we've got going on. And uh, so the be motor has to come out, uh, swap over a few things because there are some, there are some differences in the, uh, motor from 1982 to the motor from 1986. Uh, let's see here. Point out just a couple things here. A uh, big one right now is swapping this out for the one, this uh, oil filter setup for the one that's on the 82. Um, it mounts in the same place, but it doesn't come down like this. And there's a few other uh, fittings on here that my car does not have. So this setup won't work, so we just gotta swap it out. Um, the mounting up here did not change. Uh, let's see here. Gotta figure out where we're going here because this lower radiator hose connects here, um, but on the car, it, it actually connects up here. Uh, let's see here, what else we got? Uh, alternator, its wiring harness is a little bit different on the 85 than it is on the 82, so I'm gonna swap out the radiator, uh, with the radiator swap out the alternator uh we got to put the new wiring harness on it from my car uh because they they cut the wiring harness on this one when they removed it i don't know why they did that they just did um uh, more likely to ease uh removal uh but anyway not a big deal um it's just i don't know what eight or ten connect connections it's whatever. Um, 
Let's see here. Also, while it's out, I'm going to go ahead and swap out these brake, these brake accumulators with the new ones I got for the car uh, here a few months back that I was going to do, but we just couldn't get them off. So I'm going to do them while it's off the car. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, so that's really, that's really the big differences in this motor from the other one. Uh, oh, I'm going to swap out this bellow for the, this bellows for the one that's on the car. And I'm going to put a few new, take some of the new parts off of this one, off of the 82, and put them on the 85 or 86, like the uh, coil distributor cap, put a new rotor in it. I've got all that stuff. Uh, so that's not a big deal. Uh, let's see here. Probably put the new plugs and wires in it. And go from there. Um, we're going to try and do it with the transmission still in the car. I know some people are like, you can't do that. Well, yeah, actually you can. Uh, I've done it before on other cars. We can do it on this one. Um, so yeah, this is going to be, this is going to be a fun time. This is going to be a fun time. This is, um, this motor's just wore out. Oh, and the cool thing about it is, is the new motor came with a uh, newer style compressor. So it runs, um, it'll run the one, th uh, R134 instead of the R12. So that's cool. Don't have to worry about that. Uh, so I'll have to flush the receiver dryer and, uh, yeah, flush the hoses. And I'll probably just wind up buying a new receiver dryer here pretty soon down the road anyway. So, yeah. Yeah, so we got the grill is off. The bonnet needs to come off. Need to pull the radiator and that shroud up there. Pull the fan. Disconnect everything. Hook the crane up. And slide it out. So anyway, yeah, just give you a quick go through here of the interior once more. Pardon the car, it's dirty. It just sits in the garage most of the time right now. Um, and I really haven't had time to clean it. So yeah, this is uh this is what we're working with. Um had the seats done by a local shop here in town that uh does aircraft seat refurbishments and aircraft interiors. I think they did a really, really good job on the seats. I redid the dashboard and I redid the door panels. So they're not professional, but they are, they're tolerable. I mean, the car is not perfect, neither am I. Um, the Rolls-Royce logos on the headrest are a little bit bigger than I would have liked, but they are growing on me. So that's okay. I got this, this uh, plush, I guess, Wilton wool carpets in here. I just need a, new, need a new pad. I'll probably wind up swapping these out. They're just, that's the cool thing about these cars is these are just panels. That's all these are. These are just panels. So yeah, I can go to like Flying Spares and order up a new set of carpets. And, uh, you know, it's, it's pretty cool. I don't really have to do a whole lot to get them out. Um, yeah, what else? What else are we doing here? Um... Yeah, I think that's about it for right now. Um, 